Welcome everyone. This screencast is an overview of Assignment 3 and the associated Bake Off. Our topic is Compositional Generalization. This is a favorite topic of mine. This is our attempt to really probe deeply to see whether models have learned to systematically interpret natural language. The starting point for the work is the COGS paper and the associated benchmark from Kim and Linson. We're actually going to work with a modification of COGS that we call RECOGS. This is recent work that we released, and it simply attempts to address some of the limitations that we perceive in the original COGS benchmark, while nonetheless adopting the core insights and core agenda that COGS set. The RECOGS task is fundamentally a semantic parsing task. The inputs are simple sentences and the outputs are logical forms like this. So here in this example, the input is a rose was helped by a dog. And you can see that the output is a sort of event description as a logical form. We have an indefinite a rose, an indefinite dog. We have a helping event. The theme of that helping event is the rose and the agent of that helping event is the dog. Here's a similar example. The sailor dusted a boy, and it has an output that looks like this. The new element here is that we have a definite description in the input, and that's marked by a star in the output. This is like the sailor here. You can probably see that the cogs and recog sentences tend to be somewhat unusual. This is a synthetic benchmark. They were automatically generated from a context-free grammar, and so their actual meanings are sort of unusual. Um, but that's not really the focus of either of these benchmarks. We're going to talk in more detail about how COGS and RECOGS compare to each other in the core screencast for this unit, but just briefly, COGS is the original, RECOGS builds on COGS and attempts to rework some aspects of COGS to focus on purely semantic phenomena, whereas we believe that COGS is testing in addition for a bunch of incidental details of logical forms. For a quick comparison, I have the input, the sailor saw Emma here, and you can see the recogs and cogs format. And in broad strokes, the recogs format is somewhat simpler. There are a bunch of redundant symbols that have been removed, and some core aspects of the semantics have been reorganized while nonetheless preserving the meaning of the original. The recog splits work like this. We have a large train set of almost 136,000 examples. And there is a dev set of 3,000 examples that are like those in train. This is a sort of IID split. We're not going to make much use of the dev split. Our focus is instead on these generalization splits. This is what's so interesting about COGS and RECOGS. This is 21,000 examples in 21 categories. And the name of the game here is to have novel combinations of familiar elements to really test to see whether models have found compositional solutions to the task. Here are three examples of those generalization splits. They're typical of the full set. And I would say one hallmark of these generalization splits is that they hardly feel like generalization tasks for us as speakers of the language. They appear incredibly simple, but as you'll see, they're very difficult for even our best models. For example, this category is subject to object proper name. The idea here is that we'll have some names that we see in subject position in the train set, like Lena here is the subject. And then in the generalization split, we will encounter Lena in object position, and that will be a new occurrence of Lena. And the task is to see whether the model can figure out what role Lena plays in the semantics for that unfamiliar input. Very simple for people, surprisingly difficult for our models. Primitive to subject is a similar sort of situation. At train time, there are some names that just appear as isolated elements with no syntactic con context around them. At generalization time, we have to deal with them as the subjects of full sentences. It seems simple, but it proves challenging. CP recursion is a little bit different. This is testing to see whether models can handle novel numbers of embedded sentences. In the train set, you get embeddings like Emma said that Noah knew that the cat danced, and the generalization split simply includes greater depths, like Emma said that Noah knew that Lucas saw that the cat danced. It seems simple, it hardly feels like a generalization task to us, and yet again, difficult for our models. All right, that was by way of background. Let's have a look at question one, proper names and their semantic roles. 
you are not training models for this question. This is good old fashioned data analysis. It has two parts. For task one, you write a function called get proper role names that takes in a logical form and extracts the list of all name role pairs that occur in that logical form. And then for task two, you write find name roles, which uses get proper name roles to discover what roles different proper names are playing in the various splits that Recogs contains. And I'll just give you the spoiler now. Charlie, the proper name, is only a theme in train and only an agent in the generalization splits, whereas Lena is only an agent in train and only a theme in the generalization splits. And this observation about the data tells us a lot about downstream model performance. These names indeed prove very difficult for our models to deal with. After question one, I'll warn you, there is sort of a long modeling interlude. I've provided all the pieces that you need to train your own recogs models. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I wanted to provide them so that you could explore that as an avenue for your original systems. So let me walk you through this interlude. The first step is a hugging face tokenizer. I'll confess to you that my original plan was to have this be one of the homework questions, but I found writing this hugging face tokenizer to be so difficult and so confusing that I decided not to burden you with it. So I'm instead offering you this tokenizer in the hopes that you can benefit from it and maybe modify it for your own tasks down the line. The PyTorch data set is similar. This is a data set for recogs. I originally thought it would be a homework question, but it has some fiddly details about it that may be tentative about doing that. So instead, I am just giving it to you. Step three is a pre-trained recogs model. Zen trained this model. It is an outstanding recogs model. And the idea is that you can just load it in and then make use of it. For your original system, you might fine tune this model or do something else to it, but you don't need to do that for the homework question that comes next, you simply use this as a pre-trained model and explore its predictions. The next step is recogs loss, and this is a simple PyTorch module that helps me make the model that Zen trained compatible with the code that we have for this course in general so that it's easy for you to fine tune the model if you want to. So that's a small detail. Then we have Recog's module, and this is a lightweight wrapper around Zen's model that is again designed to help us be compatible with the underlying optimization code in particular that we have in our co course code base. And then finally, the interlude ends at step six with Recog's module. This Recog's model, sorry, this is the main interface and is the only one that you need to worry about if you're not training models for your original system. If you're not doing that, if you're pursuing another avenue, then you can more or less ignore one through five and just focus on six and treat it as a simple interface for loading Zen's model and using it. But I'm hoping that some of you want to dig deeper into how this model is trained and maybe improve it. And in that case, steps one through five will be especially useful to you. So that's why they're all embedded in the notebook. Having made it through the interlude, we now get to question two, which is exploring predictions of the model. For this question, you just use Zen's trained recogs model out of the box. And what you're doing is continuing the data analysis that you began in question one. So you complete a function called category assess. And the name of the game here is to discover for yourselves that this really good model struggles really a lot with the proper names that are in unfamiliar positions, exactly the names that you identified for question one. And so you can see the hypothesis behind COGS and RECOGS validated here. Novel combinations of these elements, however simple, turn out to be challenging for our, our really good model. Before proceeding, I wanted to say one thing about RECOGS assessment. And again, we'll talk more in detail about this in the main screencast for the unit. But just quickly, the goal of RECOGS is really to test for semantic interpretation and get past some of the incidental details of logical form. So our evaluation code is somewhat complicated. Here are three instructive examples. For RECOGS, unlike for COGS, 
the precise names of bound variables do not matter. So for example, these two logical forms here are called equivalent, even though the first logical form uses the variable four and the second logical form uses the variable seven. The idea is that since all these variables are implicitly bound for recogs and cogs, we don't care about their particular identity, just the binding relationships that they establish, and those are the same in these two cases. Here's another case, the order of conjuncts does not matter. That seems intuitive semantically, and we wanted it to be realized in our evaluation code. So dog and happy, and happy and dog evaluate to true. The order of the conjuncts is incidental. However, consistency of variable names does matter. So this pair evaluates to false because the first one uses dog and happy. Uh, it has both the vari variable four for both of those predications, whereas the second one has dog of four and happy of seven. And that is semantically distinct. Now we're talking presumably about two distinct elements, whereas the first logical form is about one. And so we arrive at a conclusion that these are semantically not equivalent. So that's three kind of cases that give you a feel for what we're trying to do with this evaluation, which is really get at semantic equivalence, even where logical forms vary. Final question for the main part of the homework, question three, switches gears entirely. This is a basic in-context learning approach. And the idea here is to just get you over the hill in terms of using DSP as we did in homework two and applying it to this new case. And I, my thinking here is that if I push you a little bit to write your first DSP program for recogs, you might try more versions of that and really make progress. So here's the kind of logical, or here's the kind of prompt that you'll offer to the model. We've got a couple demonstrations, input, and then the task for the model is to generate a new logical form. And the task here for you in terms of coding is to just write a very simple DSP program. It is simple indeed. As I said, my hope is that it's kind of inspiring you to do more sophisticated things, maybe for your original system. I will warn you that even for our best large language models, they superficially seem to understand what this task is about. And when you glance at the logical forms that they predict, they often look kind of good, but then you run the evaluation code and you get zero right. And you realize that kind of good is not really sufficient for this task. You need to be exactly correct. And these large language models seem to struggle to be exactly correct at this semantic parsing task. Finally, question four, as usual, you're doing your original system. For your original system, you can do anything you want. The only constraint is that you cannot train your system on any examples from the generalization splits, nor can the output representations from those examples be included in any prompts that you use for in-context learning. The idea here is that we want to preserve the sanctity of the generalization splits to really get a glimpse of whether or not systems are generalizing in the way that we care about. With that rule in place, I thought I would just review a few original system ideas. And remember, this is not meant to be exhaustive, but rather just inspiring about some potential avenues. So here they are. You could write a DSP program. You could do further training of our model. You could use a pre-trained model. You could train from scratch. Maybe you could even write a symbolic solver. And there might be other things that you can do. Let me elaborate just briefly on a few of these options. So here, if you want to further train our model, that should be very easy. This little snippet of code here loads in the model that Zen trained. And then you can see with this here, I'm doing just a little bit of additional fine tuning of that model on a few of the dev examples, which is fine to do because our focus is on those gen splits. And what I've done in this snippet is expose a lot of the different optimization parameters because I think you'd really want to think about how best to set up this model to get some more juice out of the available data from this further training, essentially. But I've also, in the notebook, offered you code that shows how easy it is to take our starting point and modify it to use a pre-trained model. Here, what I've done really is just write a T5 recogs module to load in the T5 model. And then T5 recogs model is the primary interface. And now what you've got is a device that loads in T5 
And it won't work at all if you try to use it directly to make predictions about the recogs task. It will actually sort of amusingly translate your examples into German. But you could fine tune T5 so that it can do the recogs task with the hypothesis that the pre-training that T5 underwent uh, is useful for helping with the generalization splits in particular. And very similar code could be modified so that you train from scratch by simply loading in with hugging face code random parameters that might have the structure of a BERT model or something like that. Hugging face, face makes that very easy and you could explore different variants essentially of training from scratch on the recogs task. And I'll leave other options for you to think about. I'm really keen to see what you all do with the recogs data. And then finally for the bake-off, this is straightforward. There's a TSV file that contains some test cases. Uh, those are generalization test cases. You just need to add a column prediction which can, contains your predicted logical forms. And then this final code snippet here is what you do to write that to disk for uploading to the Gradescope auto grader. And we'll see how you all do on this surprisingly very challenging task of semantic interpretation.